Hello, this is Mr. Ells. I'm in my classroom, and we're going to, for anatomy and physics, we're going to look at the 17 movements of freely movable joints, the diarthrotic dire joints or synovial joints. And you did something on like that a couple weeks ago. We'll review that just a little bit in some PowerPoint that I'll give you. But I wanted you to see some of these movements, first of all, before you stare at them on two-dimensional paper. And it'll probably help some. This will just be a, a few-minute video. Uh, anyway, here are the 17 terms, and you'll be seeing those as, as we go on, so you don't have to memorize them here, but if you need to come back and see them sometime, you can. But uh, and we'll start off with, um, actually we'll start off with some motions over this way. We're going to get the words off your screen now. We'll put it back on there before we leave. But um, the 17 movements of free, freely movable joints, and again, those were bones that did not touch. Okay, If we want free movement, and he different range of motion all they can't be touching each other because we're not going to get any movement when we do that and we do have immovable joints we do have some slightly movable joints okay but for freely movable joints and when you study the joint cavity synovial membrane synovial fluid joint capsule you notice the bones we're not touching so even like you need it those bones aren't touching it better be able to handle a tremendous amount of force, and that's what some of the fluid is present that's in there. And we mentioned um, hydraulic pressure at that point. So anyway, some of the with this with the movements, you can see they're pretty much paired up. There's one of them that has three terms. And that's how we get some odd numbers on it. And most a lot of these you've heard before. Um, movements if we're moving something away from the midline to take someone away is to abduct a b d abduction is to move away from the midline moving to the midline is adduction okay with your fingers abduction adduction with the lower legs abduction adduction is moving in so abduction and adduction okay Usually one of them, and we'll be looking at the opposite also. That's why it's not too tough to remember these. Um, uh, other ones that you've seen, if, if, we have a, if we have a joint, okay, where this is 180 degrees, elbow is going to bend. If we're decreasing the angle of the joint, that's flexion, okay? Decreasing the angle of the joint is flexion, okay? Increasing the angle of the joint is extension, okay? So flexion, decreasing the angle of the joint. Extension is increasing it, 45, 90, 180. I increase the angle of the joint, that's extension. Now it's also, uh, let's bring our helper over here. This is the one, okay, flexion, extension. This one where we get the third word, all, word also, so we have odd numbers. If someone like is running, like for example in football, and they plant and everything is extended, and someone hits them straight on and pushes his back more than in the more than the normal range, it's hyperextension. So flexion, extension, hyperextension. If it's extended beyond this normal range, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, other terms that apply to a number of different joints. Um, this isn't really a great pair, but they pair them up because there's some circular motion there. If there's movement, we studied the atlantal axial joint before, and that allows for, this was a pivot joint, the movement is rotation, moving about a central axis, okay? Moving about a central axis is rotation, pivot joint, okay? All right, the other one that's kind of paired with that is, hey, when there's movement of the bone, when there's movement, it takes a cone shape, okay? So, <clears throat> like the, your ball and socket joints can do this, of course, but um, uh, if, we make, if we're doing this movement, this is called circumduction, where here would be the point, and this, where my fingers would be, would be the bottom of the cone, circumduction, okay? My uh, condyloid joints can do that also. The joints in the knuckles, we can make the movement, it's called circumscribe the shape of a cone, okay? Circumduction. The condyloid joint or the ellipsoidal joint in the, in the wrist, 
can also do that. When we get the movement there, it makes the shape, it makes a cone shape also, all right? So, um, the next two, you've heard these words before. Uh, you've heard pronation and supination. Um, if you can see my feet, okay, where we typically talk about, oh, if it's, oh, oh they, they pronate. If they're pigeon-toed, they pronate. And if, uh, if someone's standing in the anatomical position, palms out, if we turn it, if we turn the, the hands in, that's pronation. Actually, pro, pronation, supination is palms and, and, and feet out. Okay, if someone is duck walking, okay, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's supination is what they say. Now, we, we can tell on the feet and the hands, especially on the feet, but actually the pronation and supination has to do with, with the position of the elbow and position of the knees. If I, now watch this movement here, as I pronate my hand or supinate it, okay? Pronate it, supinate it is in the anatomical position, palm out. Now watch the elbow, okay? It's actually the elbow rotating in is pronation. The elbow rotating out is supination. Okay. The knee rotating in is pronation. The knee rotating out is, sup is supination. We see it, it looks like big time exaggeration on, on the feet. So that's what we notice, but it's actually up in the, in the, uh, in the knees and in the ankle. Okay, and that takes us through nine of them so far. The other eight are very much paired up and specific. One of the first ones, um, first ones, it has to do with the jaw, where we can, if you watch me, we can um, protract, which is stick the jaw out. We can retract, which is bring the jaw back in. So protraction is sticking the jaw out. Retraction is bringing the jaw back in. Okay. Protraction, retraction. On the skeleton here, protraction, sticking the jaw out, retraction, bring it back in. Protraction, retraction, okay? Um, one is with the shoulders. A lot of you do this when it's uniform check in the morning, okay? Where just specifically with the shoulders, we can elevate the shoulders, we can depress the shoulders. Elevation and depression, elevation and depression okay with the with the feet these next four are basically with the feet um, standing on your tippy toes standing on your tiptoes is known as plantar which is bottom of the foot plantar flexion plantar flex plantar flexion okay um, if you move it over here this if you rock back on your heels or this stretching board, this calf stretching board that I have in here, that a number you would utilize some, okay? This is bringing the toes up towards the knees. This is called dorsiflexion. One word, dorsiflexion, D-O-R-S-I-F-L-E-X-I-O-N, dorsiflexion. So plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. The last two have to do with position of the foot as far as the sole of the foot and, and the ankle, okay? If I turn it in, like if you're running like, if you turn your ankle, okay? And it, it turns like this, where the sole of the foot is in, that is called inversion, inversion. If, uh, boy, if you turn your ankle the other way, oh my goodness, that, that lasts a lot, much longer, it's longer to heal and it hurts a lot more, okay? But if you take your sole of the foot and move it outward, that's called eversion. So sole of foot in is inversion, sole of foot outward is eversion. Okay. And those are the 17 movements. Like I said, you'll have PowerPoint with it. We'll show you these terms again right now. And like I said, you'll see them again. Um, and they have to do with movements of freely movable joints. That was fun, thank you very much. Bye.